here this morning, God, instead of anything that has to do with us. We set aside our own cares and concerns right now, God, to give you glory, to give you honor, God. And just take a few moments, oh God, to tell you that we love you, God. We're grateful for you, God. We appreciate you, God. That you are our Heavenly Father and we are your children. Hallelujah. We love you because you have first loved us. And now, God, hear our petitions, oh God. Hear our petitions of prayer this morning, oh God, that we lift up to you, oh God. That we thank you and ask you to bless those that have rule and make decisions in any political setting, mandated in this city, in this county, in this state, in all of the states of the United States of America, all the representatives, congressmen, oh God, the president, vice president, cabinet members, the defense department, oh God, that we play no games this morning, oh God. We pray for them, God, and ask you to send a special blessing upon them, oh God. Let your spirit rule and reign, O oh God, within the decisions that they make, O oh God, for the people, not only of the United States of America, that the decisions that they make that affect and impact people throughout this world, O oh God, be done with truth, honesty, and integrity, O oh God. That you let the whole world know, O oh God, that you are God, and you are sovereign, and you are powerful. And you are mighty. No thing happens without you knowing, God. And you already have all the solutions already figured out, already done, already planned out. But just help mankind now, God, and know that you are a mighty God. You make no mistakes. You know what's best for your people. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, now for our people, this body of believers, oh God. We ask you to, to bless each and every member here, oh God, every person under the sound of my voice with a special blessing, oh God, that they know and come to understand that you are their source. You shall supply all their needs according to your riches in heaven, oh God. We ask a blessing, oh God, that if anybody here has medical problems, oh God, for being comforting, oh God, that we have had the death of a loved one, oh God, that our children, oh God, stay in order, oh God, that our households and our families be blessed in the name of Jesus, that everything be righteous, oh God, everything be done decent and in order, oh God, that everyone, oh God, Falls in line with your will and your way, oh God. We ask everybody, God, that is traveling here to be here, oh God, this morning, that you get them safe travels, oh God, as they come and as they go, oh God. We ask you to bless all our officials and officers and helpers in their respective places, oh God. We ask you to bless the musician this morning, oh God. That you may bless him, God, and anoint him, God, as he leads us into praise and worship unto you, O oh God. That you lift him up, O oh God, and you put your heavenly hand upon his, O oh God. And that you use his voice, O oh God, to sing praises on high, O oh God. And give you all the glory, O oh God, that you deserve this morning, O oh God. We pray for the pastor and his family, O oh God, that you strengthen him, O oh God. That you infuse him with a new and a fresh
fresh anointing this morning, oh God, that he may break the bread of life with you and your people, oh God, that we may be fed, oh God, and that we may come to a better and knowledgeable understanding, oh God, of your words, oh God, and how to apply them in our lives, oh God. We ask you to bless his family, oh God, his wife, oh God, his children, his grandchildren, oh God. Everything, God, bless everything that he does, and God, thank you for the prayer that he has prayed over his congregation for far before the years, God. Thank you for the service he has given us, oh God, for all of the years, oh God. Just lift him up, oh God, this morning, God, and anoint him afresh, oh God. And anoint our ears, oh God, and touch our eyes that we may hear what the precious Holy Spirit of the Lord God Almighty has saved to us this morning. Open our hearts, oh God, that we may show and share more love one to another, God. Bless us all from now. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Let your spirit grow and reign in this place, oh God, and we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory that you deserve. In the mighty, matchless, marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, come on, church, put your hands together. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah.
herido. El mejor hombre que vive. El mejor que salva. El mejor que acaba. Por Dios que es mojo.
the Lord. Certainly in the minds of but we thank God for another day. Amen. So we thank God for this day. Thank God for this day. Say that he has made it. I will rejoice and be glad. Thank God for our visitors today. Child Omega, Chapter of Tallahassee, Florida. Omega, Sci Fi is visiting us today. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Say 
God must change us. In order to be blessed, you've got to be in the right position and in the right posture to be blessed. And many of us in Christendom, many of us who are saved and sanctified and going to heaven anyhow, many of us are not in the right position, nor the right posture to really be blessed like God really wants to bless us. I suggest to you that there is a better you inside of you that God is getting ready bring out. Now you got to submit to him. You got to subject yourself to him if he's going to bring out. He's not going to break in your life to get that better him out of you. You got to allow him to take full control of your life. All right. Amen. I know you 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 you're a Christian. I know you're an innovation. I know you're part of the best reformation there is in the world. God has brought you a long way. I know that you're sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know that you learn Greek and Hebrew. I know you have the gift of tongues and you can do the Holy I know all about that. I know you've got a special anointing on your life. But hear me today. I suggest to you that there is a better you inside of you. It is you versus you. you. It is to be. It's up to me. Now, the characteristics or attributes are going to be different for different people. For some of you, there is a more bold of you that needs to come out. Some of you, there's more education that needs to come out. More anointing that needs to come out. There is a better you inside of you. And if it's to be, it's up to you. Everybody needs to be searching for that better you. Because it's in there. You've got to let it out. The Bible backs me up with this. There was a mother. Come on, Bible students. Stuck inside the barren camp. There was a king stuck inside the little shepherd boy, David. There was a mighty man of valor stuck inside of Gideon. There was a Peter stuck inside of Simon. There was a great apostle stuck inside of Saul of Tarsus. Stop by to remind us today to tell you that there is a better you stuck inside of you. So, as we look at the text, I pin this text. I call the story when Jacob met Israel. Hmm. There's an Israel stuck inside of Jacob. And when we pick up the story, when we pick up the text, Jacob finally meets Israel. The timing is very important because the timing unfolds when the Lord tells Jacob that it is time for you to go back to Canaan. The Lord tells Jacob, you've got to go back to Canaan. He's telling somebody that you've got to go back and get some stuff straight. Hmm. All right. You've got to go back where you messed up. Mm -hmm. He tells Jacob, you've got to go back to Canaan. I'm going to bless you there. I'm going to bless you when you go back to the world. You left me. Yeah. Got to go back to the promised land. You don't got to go back to the land of blessing. Now God deals with Jacob before he goes back to the promised land, before he goes back to Canaan. Because, watch this, you can't go to the promised land any kind of way. Yeah. You can't receive God's abundant blessings any kind of way. And some of you are missing the promise, man, are missing the blessing because you're not ready. That's right. You can't say amen and say ouch. Yeah. God 
got to work on you. Because if you will go to the promised land with a wilderness mentality, mm -hmm. guess what? After a few months, you will turn the promised land into a wilderness. You'll turn a good situation into a bad situation. And some of you are not at the door. Some of you are not, you, some of you are at the door of the promised land, but God wants you in. You're at the door. But God wants you in. Because there are some things he's got to deal with. One of the things that Jacob had to deal with was his reconciliation with his brother Esau. Mm -hmm. Come on, Bible students. Saints, if God if, if, if you got an Esau in your life. You can't go to the promised land. You can't receive the blessing until you deal with that Esau. Mm -hmm. You know the story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jacob tricked his brother mm -hmm. Esau out of his birthright. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see, you got to deal with your Esau. What, 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 what trickery? And you know Jacob is known as the trickster. That's right. What trickery have you done to, to get ahead? What walked on to, to move up the, the, the corporate ladder. There may be somebody you have wronged, you have misused, you have abused, you have ostracized and criticized, lied on, and, 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 and ridiculed. They may not know it, but guess what? You know. And if you're ever going to get to the promised land, get to the abundant blessings of God, you have to deal with Esau. All right. And only you and God know who your Esau is. Are you hearing me? There are some mothers that abandoned you. Mm -hmm. That you still mad at. There's some fathers that molested you. You still mad at There's some church folk that hurt you. You got to deal with you. It's all. There's a wife that hurt you. There's a husband that abused you. You got to deal with Esau. So Jacob knows that he has to deal with and in chapter 32, verse 1, the Bible says that, and Jacob went on his way, and the angels of the Lord met him. See that? Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, hear me well. Jacob got some things together and he deals with the angels. And Jacob sends messenger to his brother Esau, verse 3, still in chapter 32, to let him know that he has got to get it straight with him. Jacob sends his messenger to let his brother know whom he had tricked. To let him know, I got to get it right with my brother Esau. Verse 11, Jacob starts to pray because he's scared. He's afraid to deal with Esau. Wonder why. He's afraid to deal with Esau now because not only is Jacob powerful, but now Esau, the one who's retreat, Esau is powerful too. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, you better watch who you walk on right. because the same people that you walk on after a little while past, you find that they will have as much power as you have. Mm -hmm. Be careful who you treat bad. Mm -hmm. 
God can raise him up to. So, so Jacob is afraid and he's wondering, what is Esau, my brother, what is he going to do? So the text says in verse 22 of chapter 32, the text says that he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the four and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. Wow. Now, the first thing that has to happen if you're going to find that better you inside of you, if you're going to be better, the first thing that has to happen is that you will have to have a confrontation with God. That's right. That's point number one. Mm -hmm. If you're going to find that better you inside you, if you're going to be better, you're going to have to have a confrontation with God. Amen. And when you get in that confrontation with God, you've got to be by yourself. Okay. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. The problem with most of us the problem with most people is they are afraid to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. But there will come a time, my brothers and my sisters, that the saints are not going to be around. There will come a time in your life the pastor won't be present, the deacons will not be there, the Christian women will not be there, the youth directors will not be there. That won't be around. Isn't it strange that people, church people, they go from church to church, uh -huh. conference to conference, convention to convention, mm -hmm. looking for this place, looking for that place, because they are afraid to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. Because it is by yourself that you really start to deal with God. That's right. The text says in verse 24 that he was left alone. alone. That's right. Most of the time, God going to deal with you is going to be you by yourself. Now, this in this text, this is God in the form of a man. Now, isn't it interesting that when Jacob meets God, he meets God as an opponent? Not as his ally, but he meets God as an opponent. That is a terrible way, I believe, to meet God as an opponent. But there is a reason, I believe, why Jacob had to meet God as an opponent. Because Jacob is now in the process of getting that new person out of him. So he has to meet God as an opponent. Because God is the creator, don't you know? And creation makes God the proper opponent for you to go through your personal progress. Did you get that? You're not going to go through your personal progress until you deal with the one who created you. Many folk in Christian know trying to find themselves in the wrong places. Uh -huh. They have a tendency to do some wrong things. That's right. They go to this place and that place trying to find themselves. You've got to deal with God. Why? Because only God knows where you are supposed to be. Only God knows where you are supposed to be. When you really want your conflicts, you 
you don't just take it to him. You take it, if you really want to fix and fix right, you take it back to the one who manufactured it. Or you take it back to the dealer. Now you can go to the shade tree if you want to. But we all know that here. Shade tree mechanics, those guys can't chop under the tree. You go to the shade tree if you want to. But in this day and time, the old car, you make a new one. You go this day and time, because you can't go to the shade tree and get your car done right. So it's best to take it back to the one who created it. You've got to deal with God. And some in Christendom today have broken lives and don't know, and they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know where they're supposed to be. But the problem is, <coughs> you got you keep going to flesh. Hmm. You keep going to yourself, and you you didn't realize that you was the one who got you in that situation. Right? Right. We keep going to ourselves, and we keep going to the flesh, and we keep feeding the flesh. You've got to deal with the spirit. Man was first spirit before he was flesh. You got to deal with the spirit. You got to deal with God. Now Jacob is used to fighting and he's used to struggling. He fought with his brother. He struggled with his father-in-law Laban. He is used to fighting men, but now he has to fight with God. Bible makes it clear. It says in the text that Jacob wrestled, not struggled, with God. There's a difference between struggling and really wrestling. Wrestle means you wind limb over limb. I'm not talking about the stuff you see on TV. I'm talking about real wrestling. You Right, limb over limb, and the one who pins the other is the one. You are limb over limb, close together, bowed together, and who pins the other is the one. You've got to get with God and let Him wrap Himself around you, and you wrap yourself around Him, and when it's all over. God is still standing. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? You got to have a confrontation with God. That's right. That's my first point. The second thing that I discovered was Jacob's determination. After his confrontation came his determination. His determination in the fight. This is what it said in the verse 24. And there wrestled with a man. And then wrestle a man with him until when? Come on, y'all talk about that. The breaking of day. They fought all night long. But Jacob doesn't quit. The trickster, the colonizer, the one who tricked his brother out of his birthright, he's now wrestling with God and he won't quit. Hangs in there. His determination transcends time, energy, and injury. The text says he wrestled all night. That lets me know that it didn't matter how long it took. Jacob was going to hold on to God. Mm -hmm. Some of us Problem is that we want instant message. So, so, so Jacob's determination it transcends time, energy, and injury. Energy he had to be tired, but he didn't quit. And some of us we've been fighting for years, and you're tired, and you're ready to give up. 
You've been praying for that blessing. You've been praying for that husband. You've been praying for that wife. You've been praying and trying to succeed in life. And, and you're tired. And you're about to throw in the towel. Yes. About to quit. Just before the breakthrough. That's right. Guess what? When you quit, the devil pulls back the curtain and says, But when you and I make up our minds, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I may have to pray harder. I may have to fast more. I may have to give more. But I will wait till I change. As in also injury. The text says in the middle of his Wrestling. The angel touched his thigh uh -huh. and he gets hurt. Uh -huh. In Jacob's determination, he experienced dislocation. Mm -hmm. How many of you, after doing what God has told you to do, and you know God told you to do it, you got hurt? You got dislocated. You were working for the Lord. In the church, and in the church, you got hurt. Right. This location, this dislocation was a noticeable injury. Some folk in Christendom got some pains and some problems and some complexities that are public, and but you're trying to. But you've got to let everybody know that I may be crying, yeah. I may be stumbling, I may be fumbling, I may be hurt, but I won't let God go until he bless me. Amen. 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 Because I know that there's a better me inside of me. Yeah. I'm determined. So Jacob is so determined because he desires a legitimate blessing. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. All right. You hear what I said? A legitimate blessing. Yes, he had been fighting all his life. Yes, and most of his previous blessings were illegitimate. Mm -hmm. But now he wants a legitimate blessing. Amen. Some of you got some things, but you got them illegitimate. You got a position. Illegitimate. You got some power, some prestige. You got a job. Illegitimate. You got a bank account. Illegitimate. You got a husband that is not yours. Illegitimate. My wife. The children. You got all that stuff, but you got it illegally. James says in the Bible, every good and perfect gift. Comes from the Lord. It is time that you got something that's real, mm -hmm. something that is legit, something that God signed off on. That's right. Look at your neighbor. Don't look at him too hard and tell him you got to get something legit. <laughs> so, so now I'm almost finished. So, so now, so now, so, so, so now, we have seen. We have seen the determination by Jacob and the dislocation. Right. Now I discovered the transformation of Jacob's person. Look at verse 27 and verse 28. We almost finished. And he said unto him, What is thy name? He said, Jacob, the man talking to Jacob, he's wrestling with him. Verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God. Mm -hmm. well, same. Jacob was who? A trickster, comrade. Mm -hmm. Now he's a what? Mm -hmm. Prince. Mm -hmm. Power with God, with men, and has 
prevailed. In this transformation, first of all, he gets a new name. In the Hebrew, name indicates nature. So he gets a new name. So when God changes his name, he's given a revelation of a change in nature. He's saying to him, you are no longer what you were. Mm -hmm. I'm changing your name. Now, when you look at the story very carefully, look at the story of Jacob. Sometimes he is called Jacob mm -hmm. in the Bible. And sometimes he's called Israel. Mm -hmm. Jacob was his old name. That's right. Israel was his new name. Right. But sometimes in the Bible, he's called by his old name. Sometimes he's called by his new name. Uh -huh. It is back and forth. Unlike when God changed Abram to Abraham, he didn't go back to calling him Abraham. When he changed Sarai's name to Sarah, you never hear her called Sarai again. I'm going somewhere with this, so hang on. But with Jacob, Sometimes he's Jacob, but sometimes he's Israel. This indicates two things. First thing is Jacob represents a covenant of faith uh -huh. that can only be kept by faithfulness. But the other thing that God wants us to see here, I believe, is that to know is that deliverance is a process. All right. Yes, when Jacob wrestled with the man who was God in the flesh, God in a man, representing a man, when he wrestled with that man, he was changed. That's right. He was delivered. I said that like, way. But you've got to understand that deliverance is a process. Sometimes you're not going to get delivered overnight. Sometimes you're going to do what you are supposed to do. Then guess what? Other times you are not going to do what you're supposed to do. So everybody should say amen. Right? amen. Sometimes you're going to act like you're supposed to act. And sometimes you are not going to act like you're supposed to act. But you're still saved. Amen. Isn't that good news? Amen. Yes. I know some of you walk above sin. You don't have any inner struggles. But if you be honest, sometimes you wake up, Jacob. Hmm. Ah, hmm. uh, but other times you are Israel. Or you wake up Israel. Sometimes you do things. Jacob would do. You're conning. Mm -hmm. You're tricking. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you do what Israel would do. Mm -hmm. You do the right thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, the devil is still out there. All right. And all of you perhaps have been delivered. And, and, and the devil is still out there trying to convince you that you don't have what it takes. You have really been delivered. You don't have the Holy Ghost, but the Bible says, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, now are we the sons of God. And it is, and it is, we are the sons of God, and if it does not, it does not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Isn't that good news? As I come to a close today, I want us to understand that sometimes we look at others. And sometimes perhaps you see me as what I shall be. Because he's still 
working on me. Right. Can I get a witness? Sometimes you see me what as it seems like to you that I'm still taken. Because you don't know what I shall be. Because he's still working on me. Can I get a witness to Yes, I may not be a man what I need to be. But I'm, I'm going amen, in the right direction. Oh, yes. Don't turn me down because I declare I'm still a child of God. Yes, yes. I may not look like my daddy, but he's still working on me. Is there anybody here that I can attest to the fact that he's still working on you? Oh, yeah. Not only did take him, get a new name. Yes, but he also got a new walk. Wow. Yes, before he wrestled with God, he did not have a limp. Right. But after he wrestled with God, he had a limp. Yeah. Oh, yes, and that limp, yeah. yes, ought to be a, a reminder of what you had to go through right. and uh, what you had to, had to be. Yeah. Yes, I don't know about you. Yeah, Lord. And I don't know how you feel about it. Well, yes. I don't know what your thinking is. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I want to let go. I won't turn back. Right. Mm, I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hands. Yeah. Yes. I may have a limp. Yeah. yeah. And I'm on, but I'm on my way to glory. Yeah. Yes. I may not walk as fast as you walk up. Uh, but I'm on my way to glory. Yeah, yeah. But because there's a better me yeah. inside of me. Yes. There's a better me inside of me that needs to come out. Yes. And if it's the be, it's up to me. Can I get a witness? The best is yet to come. I look out the course of time. I want you to know today. Yes. You may have had you may have a good present, but your future is better than your past or present. Yes, I tell you, inside of you, can I get a witness? Yes, yeah, Lord. I'm glad today that God is still in the delivering business. He's still in the changing business. He's still in the promoting business. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yes! Say yes! There's a better you inside of you. There's a better you that perhaps you don't even realize. But it's in there. And I believe that God is getting ready to take those who are faithful and bring that potential out so it'll be a better world to live in. The government don't have the answers. The politicians don't have the answers. The lawmakers don't have the answers. God is the answer for the world to be. And if he changed the trickster like Jacob, he can change us and use us. You take them to the utmost. And when you hear about those who have been blessed by God, you start with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He used Jacob to make a difference. And he'll use us to make a difference. Right. There's a better you inside of you. Put your hands on yourself. There's a better you inside of me. I've done some good things. And Paul said, that Paul had done a whole lot of things, but he said, I haven't reached my total potential yet. Yes. I'm still looking yes. and focusing on the high calling yes, of Jesus Christ. Yes. I had to arrived. Yes, Paul had done some great things. Right. Paul had, had, had instituted and started many churches. Paul wrote 
two thirds of the New Testament, but Paul said, I had to take it. I had to write it. There's more. And I'm not looking back. Paul could look back and look back and saw some good things. But he said, I can't look back for the good or the bad. I got the press. All right. Amen. Walk on. The high calling of Jesus Christ. There's a better you inside of you. Surrender to the one who created you, saved you, sanctified you, and let that potential in you come out. So that God will use you to help change a generation. Come to Jesus. Come. Come to Jesus. We don't have a 
in his saving power, or we can introduce you to the one yes. that will save you in spite of you. Amen. Make it your decision to accept him or receive him because you're either doing two things. You're either receiving him or you're rejecting him. Make sure you're on the right side by receiving him as Lord and Savior of your life. Come on, put your hands together and give God a good praise. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide. And these your people in this now and forever. They all say, Amen. Amen. Have a rest